Hi, I'm glad you're still with us because I have a mistake to correct. I said the wrong title for my next guest. She's a certified senior advisor. Welcome, Nancy Watkins. Thanks so much. <laughs> I knew you were certified. I just didn't know what you were certified, <laughs> certified at. What? Yes. So tell me what is a certified senior advisor? Well, you go through a series of about six months of classes and training uh, to learn about everything that involves a senior's world, mm -hmm. uh, everything from finance to health care to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all those topics. Mm -hmm. It was really helpful. I'll bet it was. Yeah. yeah. So it was really kind of made you prepared for the business that you started here. And I have right. to say before we get into what it is you do and how you help seniors is a big thank you for the seniors that I've sent to you that you have helped. And I really appreciate the good guidance that you've given to folks. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. I I love helping seniors because when I talk to them, it's usually at a moment of crisis. Mm -hmm. They're at a point in their life where it's scary. Mm -hmm. Life is tough because their health is failing for one reason or another, and they don't know where to go or what the options are. They think, oh my gosh, all I have is the nursing home. Right. And they that's don't. far from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about assisted living options and how that works and mm -hmm. um, how somebody would, you know, give you a call or are there other people out in the community that do what you do? There are other people. Um, and what we do as advisors is we find out what the needs are, what the, the current situation is for the senior mm -hmm. and try to find the best care setting that's going to be most appropriate to meet all of their needs and preferences. Mm -hmm. And that's the tough part because you want to make it a home. You want it to be a place where they're going to feel comfortable and not fearful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes all they want to do and need to do is to get in-home care. Mm -hmm. And that's everyone's first choice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's not possible, though, because uh, maybe they have too many stairs, they've broken a hip, uh, they're alone, they're not eating well, uh, their refrigerator is bare, or they forget that they've not taken their medications. Mm -hmm. Things like that happen, and so they need a little bit of assistance. Mm -hmm. And that's where we start looking at what options are going to be most appropriate for their needs. Mm -hmm. I work a lot with the families, you know, the eldest daughter, sometimes <laughs> the son, mm -hmm. and sometimes just a good friend. Yeah, yeah. I imagine there's all kinds of varieties of folks that are trying to help the senior make the decision. Imagine there's some families that want to make the decision for mom or dad or whoever is moving. I get that a little bit, you know. Kids seem to know everything, of yeah. course. Uh -huh. um, but the seniors usually have been thinking about it all along. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't express it until they have to. Sometimes dementia becomes a problem. Memory care is an issue. Mm -hmm. And so for safety reasons, we have to look at other options for their loved one in that case. But the good news is there are lots of options. We're in a community where we have lots of choice. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't do in-home care, which can be quite expensive if you need lots of hours, mm -hmm. uh, then you might be looking for another setting. Maybe it's simply a senior apartment where uh, you can go downstairs and get meals mm -hmm. or um, bring in-home care to the apartment. Mm -hmm. um, those aren't licensed, but the in-home care is, of mm -hmm. course. Um, if assisted living is truly needed, where they need 24-7 support, uh, whether it's a little bit of support or a lot of support, mm -hmm. then that's a different setting. And that's usually um, in a larger facility. They have their own apartment. They can close the door to have privacy, but they go downstairs for meals or maybe just for one meal a day. Mm -hmm. Um, those are licensed by DSHS, and that's the good news because they do stay on top of quality mm -hmm. and want to make sure that the care is being given appropriately. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. And I know there's also another option because some of the people you've helped right. me to find places for, and that's in the smaller adult family homes. Yeah, our community is blessed to have a lot of adult family home options. Mm -hmm. uh, they are licensed by DSHS. They're not allowed to have any more than six 
seniors living in the home. And the good news is it's a home setting. Uh, typically, they'll have their own bedroom, but they'll share the living room and they'll eat meals together, home cooked meals, mm-hmm. which is always nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of their needs are taken care of. In that setting, they can provide a lot uh, higher level of care, a little bit more one-on-one care, mm-hmm. uh, because usually the ratio is one to six or two to three, or one to three. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's a great option for seniors uh, who need care, but they aren't ready for the big facility or maybe they just can't get down the long hallway mm-hmm. so yeah, I like those a lot for, for seniors yeah 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 so Nancy I'm sure one of the things you have to educate families and the senior about is the cost for this oh. which can I know vary greatly depending right. upon where people choose how do you help them see you know maybe they have some savings or when they sell their house they'll have something that they can live on but um, the costs can be pretty taxing on somebody's savings account. Do you also educate them kind of down the road if they have to get some public assistance? I do. Um, A lot of people are are sincerely shocked at the price, but when you put side by side the cost of living in your home and all of the expenses involved in keeping a home up Mm -hmm. with moving into a new setting where all those utilities, property taxes, things like that are taken care of, then sometimes you're comparing apples to apples a little bit more carefully, Mm -hmm. and it's not quite as much of a sticker shock as Mm -hmm. you would expect. But it is expensive for seniors who are on a fixed budget. Mm -hmm. Uh, They may not have a lot of savings. And so um, you're looking at from um, an in-home nursing care service of being about $25, $26 an hour uh, to an assisted living setting where it could be anywhere from 2500 per month up to as much as 6000 mm-hmm. a month. Uh, in an adult family home, it's usually between three and six. Uh, and memory care, it depends on what the level of need is. Mm-hmm. But it usually starts about 4500 and goes up to somewhere as sometimes as high as 8,000. Mm-hmm. So it's, it is expensive, um, but it's at a stage in their life where the need is great. Mm-hmm. And so when they do spend their resources, um, Medicaid is available for people. Mm-hmm. And that's where I help them uh, find specialists who can help them plan mm-hmm. for that Medicaid time frame. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the important thing to know is that families are not doing their their loved ones a favor by letting them stay home and spend to the very last dollar and then hope to find uh, a good care setting on Medicaid. Because frankly, in Thurston County, you cannot find a place that will take someone on Medicaid immediately. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult. Um, I I would say those options are few and far between. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage people to do is if you have some resources, go with um, private pay as soon as you can Mm -hmm. so that you have an opportunity to spend down and stay there on Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Now, not all facilities will take Medicaid, Mm -hmm. so that's also something good to know. As I'm counseling people, I know who which facilities will take Medicaid, Mm -hmm. which ones will not, who are more flexible in the time frame and who are not. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's all part of the scenario of of finding the best care setting. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems to me it would behoove people to to talk to somebody like you to you know you've got this wealth of knowledge after Mm -hmm. dealing with so many of the facilities home care agencies and adult family homes in our community right saves a lot of time that way it takes um, a lot of time to go into the facilities and keep on top of who's doing a good job and who is kind of struggling Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is 
narrow the focus down to meet the client's needs mm -hmm. as best as possible so that when when they are ready to go on a tour mm -hmm. that I escort them on to take a look at the options, I usually have narrowed it down to two or three, sometimes four, so that they can see the best available to meet mm -hmm. their particular needs. Yeah. I don't want to waste their time because yeah. I, there's too many facilities out there. Right. And uh, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, so. Well, you really provide a wonderful service, Nancy. You really do. And I know even after the person moves, you came yeah. have come back and visited folks that you've helped that I've known, and right. um, they become your friend. <laughs> I get very yeah. attached yeah. to them. I mean, I love to bring little goodies and, and things from the bakery or whatever uh -huh. and sit down and have coffee with them because yeah. they've they're relaxed. Mm -hmm. They know that they're being well cared for. Mm -hmm. And that does my heart good. Right. And it makes them feel good too. Yeah. And they've made new friends, which is all, always a pleasure. Right. Right. Well, thanks for coming in and visiting, explaining it all to me and all our right. audience. We really appreciate it. Thanks. All right. So please stay with us because we've got some fun and interesting things coming up for you to hear about.